Hi, I'm Ethan DeSeif. I'm a film historian and I'm a staff writer at Seven Days here in Burlington, Vermont. And I'm here to introduce a, a very favorite film of mine. This is Roger Corman's 1959 comedy horror classic, A Bucket of Blood. Uh, it's a, an old favorite of mine and I'm really happy to, to share it with you. Um, this is directed by Roger Corman, uh, who is better known as a producer. I've always regarded Roger Corman as the most influential filmmaker of the second half of the 20th century. Not the best, I don't think he would claim himself to be the best, but the most influential, and I really think this is true, mostly because so many of the people who shaped the course of cinema since Corman's time started with him working for American International Pictures. We're talking about pretty towering figures like Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, Jonathan Demme, John Sayles, Jack Nicholson, Ron Howard, my personal favorite, Joe Dante. All of these guys kind of cut their teeth making exploitation films for Corman's AIP, American International. And for this reason alone, he has had more influence than any other figure that I can imagine. Um, we're here in the Burlington, Vermont studio of, uh, of artist Elliot Katz, and it's actually kind of an ironic setting. Uh, though this film, A Bucket of Blood, takes place in the milieu of the art world, Roger Corman didn't care about things like authenticity. He would have chortled at that, I think. He was a consummate filmmaker in that he made existing locations and existing objects and existing people into fantastical ones. So while we're here for a little bit of kind of jokey authenticity, um, Corman himself probably wouldn't have cared much about it. As I say, Corman was best known as a producer, and he's still active in that regard. He's 90 years old and he's still making movies, at least from behind a desk he's making movies. He's less well known as a director, um, though he himself has directed over 50 films. I don't know why he's not better known as a director, but, but <laughs> he isn't. Though his directorial talents have certainly been eclipsed by those of his many protégés, like the people I just mentioned, uh, Corman is a really excellent director, I, th I think, uh, himself. He's um, as you'll see in Bucket of Blood, it gives ample evidence to that, to that statement. Um, though this was made relatively early in his career, that is, Corman only started directing films in, I think, about 1955. Um, <laughs> though this film was made in 1959, it was already the 23rd of his career uh, as a director. As, just as a director, uh, you've got to learn something about film craft when you've made 23 films in the matter of four or five years. And indeed he had. I, I think this film is, one of the things that's really nice about it is that it's really tight and efficient and, and very classically made in a sort of effortless way. Um, so Roger Corman was the chief creative and financial force behind, as I mentioned, American International Pictures, which was the pioneering independent studio that's known for the speedy production of low-budget exploitation films. Uh, some of the AIP films that preceded A Bucket of Blood include such lively genre films as uh, Attack of the Crab Monsters with a, a $20 uh, paper mache crab that rises from the sea, uh, Teenage Caveman with, I believe, a young Robert Vaughn, and uh, whom I've met, and The Wasp Woman, uh, a classic. Uh, all of these are totally worth your time, and that's the thing is that they actually don't take much time to watch. Uh, most AIP exploitation films came, come in around 65 or 70 minutes, which was the bare minimum to achieve feature status with exhibitors in, in movie theaters. Uh, Bucket of Blood is no exception. It's, it's a clean 65 minutes, and it's, it's a briskly made film, but it, it doesn't feel like it's lacking anything, in my opinion. Um, Corman wrote a really, really great autobiography, which is called How I Made a Hundred Movies in Hollywood and Never Lost a Dime. And its title is accurate, although I suppose since it came out 20-some years ago, we'd have to adjust the numbers up. But in that book, he says that um, Bucket of Blood took only five days to shoot, and it cost only $50,000. Um, it certainly looks like a low-budget film, but it doesn't, in my opinion, look cheap. Um, you'll see that besides a few exterior scenes here and there, really just a few, one in a lumber yard, a couple out in front of a, a building, uh, the courthouse or something like that, um, you'll see that most of the action takes place in just a few locations. Uh, the protagonist's apartment, a beatnik coffee house, another home, and that's pretty much it. Um, yet the story, in my opinion, doesn't suffer from being limited in this way. Uh, in fact, I think Roger Corman made that $50,000 go quite a long way, and that's one of the things, one of the reasons that he is so influential a filmmaker. Um, 
When we think of the term exploitation picture, we usually think of something that's really lurid or you know, dripping in blood, and, and indeed there is some blood, although I'm, I'm sure it's Hershey's syrup in a bucket of blood. And there is a bucket, but it's really more of a wash basin, so it's not totally accurate. But in any case, th this film isn't an exploitation picture in that sense of dripping with blood or nudity or anything like that, but in the sense it was exploiting a then current trend. Uh, and in this case, we are talking about beatniks. Uh, Corman and screenwriter Charles Griffith realized that they could cash in on the fact that beatniks had achieved a certain sort of cultural penetration in America at this time, the late 1950s, and all their pretensions to artsiness and freedom and grooviness and all of these things were really ripe for satire. And that's the secret weapon. The secret weapon of this film is its satirical bent. Um, a Bucket of Blood is really incisive dismantling of these beatnik pretensions, and uh, more broadly, in fact, it's a dismantling of the art world in general. Uh, no one really is left unscathed, no one who takes part in the, in the, in the production or, um, or sale or consumption of art, not at all, not the egotistical, empty-headed artists, not the exploitative gallery owners, not the self-important buyers and admirers of some pretty vapid art. You'll, you'll chuckle at the, uh, the, the works in this film that are deemed masterpieces. They're anything but, as anyone could see. And, and though that was born of the, of the low budget of this film, I think you'll, it's also part of the joke that the things that are supposed to be great art are actually nothing. They're, they're rather lousy. Um, Bucket of Blood is a really smart satire masquerading as a low-budget horror film, and that's one of the things I really like about it. It's also a really brisk, lively, really funny comedy that gives the great and still active Dick Miller uh, one of his few leading roles. It might be his only leading role, if I, but he's been in so, movies, so many movies it's, it's really, really hard to check. Dick Miller, whom you may recognize as Mr. Futterman from the Gremlins films, which of course was directed by Roger Corman protege Joe Dante, um, he was, by this point in his career in 1959, already a member of the AIP stock company. And here he gives this really great kind of nebbishy performance as a, a schnook who's a, a talentless, aspiring artist named Walter Paisley. Um, watch for the, the moment when Walter arrives as an artist about two-thirds of the way through the film, and the costume designer, which is probably Corman himself, couldn't resist dressing Walter up in actual Paisley. That's a, that's a nice little sight gag in there. I'm also really fond of the performance of a, a guy named Julian Burton, um, who plays Maxwell Brock, this unbearably pretentious, wheat germ-chomping leader of a gang of beatniks who congregate at a, ca a coffee house called The Yellow Door. This guy, is, he's all bluster and braggadocio, and it's a very, very funny performance right from the start of the film. Um, a Bucket of Blood is a film that I come back to pretty often, actually, because its humor is really sharp, it's a really witty film, and despite the general dearth of beatniks today, uh, I think the accuracy of this film's satire really has not diminished. I also love the film because it's got a really tight little narrative structure. You'll see it's three acts proceeding really, really smoothly. Um, and I, I also admire its director's ability to do a lot with a little. Uh, again, five days, $50,000, that's not bad. I really hope you like this film, and I, I hope that it might serve as a model for any talented filmmakers who may have been hesitating to make their dream project because of some sort of financial reason. Uh, Roger Corman, as you'll see, was a master of turning small budgets and good scripts into really smart, memorable, funny movies. And I think that filmmakers and viewers alike um, can learn a great deal from Bucket of Blood, which is one of my favorite films made by director, producer, and all-around influential guy Roger Corman.